So in Razor's continued efforts to take over seemingly the entire world, they reached out to me a few weeks ago and asked if I'd like to take a look at their newest optical keyboard. The catch? Well, it happens to be attached to their latest Razer Blade 15 Advanced model, which is no slouch on its own. I was hesitant. I'm a mechanical keyboard guy. I own a few, or like 30. I don't like laptop keyboards. I don't even like low profile keyboards. And if I'm gonna game, it's sure not gonna be on a laptop. But they seemed confident, and based on what I'd seen from them lately, I agree. So today we're gonna check it out. You ready? Let's go. Today's video is brought to you by Mayflower Electronics, makers of the Mayflower Arc and the new long-awaited Mark II revision. With huge improvements to the mic input and manual switching between outputs, it provides a solid watt of power at 32 ohms so it can handle any headphone you throw at it, and it does it all running only off USB. No drivers, no power supply, and a small footprint make it a powerful, portable audio file solution that's made in the US and backed by a 10-year warranty. Black Friday pricing is live right now. Click the link in the description to take advantage of their lowest price prices of the year. Check them out now at mayflowerelectronics.com. Yo, I'm Brian P. You're watching Bad Seed Tech, and today we're checking out the latest optical keyboard on the Blade 15 Advanced gaming laptop from Razer. I guess the best place to start here is to be upfront about the fact that this keyboard right now is only available on the Blade 15 Advanced, and that's going to run you $2,649. Yikes. Yeah, I know, but this thing is absolutely loaded. Intel i9-9750H processor, RTX 2070 Max-Q, 16 gig DDR4 at 2667, and a 512 gig NVMe drive. Both the RAM and the NVMe are upgradable. The icing on the cake though is the 15.6 inch 1080p 240 hertz display. You also get two USB-A, two USB-C, HDMI, and Thunderbolt. There's Intel Wireless and Bluetooth 5, but what you won't find due to the slim nature of the design here is a gigabit ethernet port. All this comes in a pretty slim package that weighs just a hair over five pounds. So obviously this thing can game. The question is, Will I want to? All these laptop keyboards usually have a similar thing going on. It's that low profile chiclet thing, usually very little travel distance, and I feel like I have to really punch them in to get them to register. I never really get the feeling that I'm moving with confidence on a laptop board. So in walks the new Razer optical board. The switches here are obviously still low profile, and they're using Razer's optical tech that we've seen now in the Huntsman boards and even in the new mouse switches. The idea remains that you're gonna interrupt a light source to register, so they should be fast, and they shouldn't suffer any debounce issues. The one big move they've made here is increasing the travel distance. We've got a total travel here of 1.7 millimeters. That's a 50% improvement over the previous model and they actuate at one millimeter. My favorite part though, they're clicky. I'm not a laptop keyboard guy, so this is the first time I've seen something like this and I generally don't like clicky switches on my desktop keyboards, but I like these here. Reason being is that it provides immediate feedback when the key registers and after a very small period of adjustment in my horrible typing habits, I got really fast and accurate with this board. The best part for me was the tactile click on actuation because I could learn to trust my keystrokes and move a lot faster. These are audibly clicky, but not nearly on the same level as like a clicky switch in a mechanical board. So it does have per key lighting powered by Synapse, but I do have to knock it for one thing. The secondary legends are not backlit. The standard keyboard now offers this, and I'm sure this has something to do with the physical design of the Switch, but I do miss it, and I wish it was here. Also, nothing new here, but Razer's layout on the keyboard is a little weird right around the right shift and the arrow cluster. If you use that right shift a lot, this is gonna throw you off for sure while you get used to this. This keyboard does have in-key rollover and anti-ghosting like you'd expect to find on a gaming keyboard. In-game, I found it to be really responsive. It never would've dawned on me to even try to play competitive on a laptop, but the fact that these are so tactile when they click they really did a great job. Even if you have headphones on, which I obviously recommend over laptop speakers, you still get a nice little tactile click on actuation. You do still get a little tactile feel on the standard board as well, but it literally bottoms out right after. It's not the same. If you're looking at the blade, I would definitely go for this keyboard upgrade. It's like a $50 or $100 upcharge, so unless you really need those secondary legends to be backlit, this is an easy win. Like I said, at the time of this video, this is only available on the 2070 Advanced model. So if you're gonna go all out with the 2080, or you're gonna look at one of their other different screen options, this won't be available just yet. All in all, I really enjoyed my few weeks time with the blade. It's a form factor that's always attracted me, that solid aluminum body. It's really thin too, at like 0.7 inches. I really like the look of the 
Mercury White model. I like how the logo is more understated as well. With the black version, you get the Razer logo in green plastic and it's backlit, which you can turn on or off. Far and away though, the biggest downside of the black version is the way that nearly every surface shows oil and fingerprints. If I were to own this, I'd probably be looking at like a D-brand skin or something to minimize this. Track pads generally aren't my favorite either, but this one's big and it's really responsive. I didn't have any issues like triggering anything accidentally and I really got used to the gestures. The screen here is really solid for a 1080p. I do miss having all the real estate on my large 4K editing monitor, but I actually edited and rendered my last two projects on this laptop start to finish. It was a great experience all around actually. I transcode all my footage to Cineform to make it easier to deal with and I had no problem editing and scrubbing my 1080p timeline full of 4K footage in full preview. Render time smoked too with my last complex like nine and a half minute 4K render clocking just a hair over 10 minutes. It was an H.264 render so it was able to utilize both GPUs for quick sync and temps held right around the high 70s with some spikes to like 87. The fans were working hard, but that performance really exceeded my expectations. If I were on the road or somewhere like CES, I would edit with this thing, no sweat. Gaming, of course, was pretty beast as well. In Modern Warfare, I managed an average FPS of around 90 to 120 with a mix of high and ultra settings. Turning RTX on will cost you about 20 FPS on average, so wasn't really pushing that 240 FPS max on the panel, but some titles will. As it is, I was able to camp corners with shotguns and drop an excessive amount of claymores with zero problem. Headphones with good isolation are a must here as the fans really turn up during gaming. GPU hit a max of like 70 degrees with the CPU averaging low 70s with a couple of spikes into the low 90s. Battery here is still the 80 watt hour. For light work, it's fine because you're gonna be running on the integrated graphics, but any serious gaming or editing work and you basically need to be plugged in or you'll pull it down really fast. Plugging in allows you to access the performance mode anyway. The keyboard, aside from the secondary legends, really did sell the experience for me. I like that you can touch type on it, but it's also built tough enough to where if you really get on it in the middle of a game, you're not gonna hurt anything. And they still manage this in the slim form factor. This was my first experience with any gaming laptop out there. There are other models out there similarly spec for cheaper. Nonetheless, I'm a big fan here. All in all, the Blade 15 made a strong first impression. The optical keyboard was a win for me. If I were gonna go this way and own something like this, I'd probably invest in a skin and I definitely invest in an ethernet dongle. Handling large footage and installing giant games can be a real time consuming process without it. I'd also probably not be able to resist the urge to max out the memory and the storage on this thing. If you know of any other gaming laptops out there that I should put on my radar, let me know in the comments. As always, links for everything we talked about in the description. Any questions, hit me in the comments or drop by the Discord. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button. Hit that sub button, and until next time, stay up. All this comes in a slim package. Oh God, I can't, I just can't say it. All this comes in a pretty slim package, weighing just over five, God damn it. All this comes in a pretty slim package that weighs just over five pounds. I can't, I can't do it. <laughs>